That's a complicated picture in, in Greece regarding the refugee emergency. And I spoke to Dimitri Papadimitriou from the Migration Policy Institute and asked how this situation had escalated so quickly and so badly. Well, the crisis in Europe um, seems to have taken the European leaders you know, by surprise. And this is totally unacceptable. This has been going on, it has been growing for almost two years now. In the last three months, it has been obvious to everyone that more and more Syrians were, would take whatever, circum whatever would be th you throw out their way in order to make it to Europe. And there was a complete failure on the part of the European Union to basically have a cohesive response to this. So people would come to Greece, very few of them, but nonetheless, some would lose their life crossing the Aegean. You know, the passages there is only, are only about three or four miles. Then they would head for the mainland in order to head up to Macedonia, go through Serbia and make it to Budapest in order to make it to Austria and Germany. And those numbers kept doubling every week or so, at the point where they had no choice but do something dramatic. And Germany did, as you pointed out, by basically saying, I will take all the Syrians who come in. So why just Germany? Why not the other EU countries? It's Couldn't they all do the same thing? Uh, they could, but Germany is thought of as the leader. It has a very strong economy. It has a labor market with formal unemployment somewhere between 45 and 5%. And the fact that Frau Merkel sees there an opportunity to lead, to basically tell the world that we are going to basically live by our values. We're not just going to talk a good talk about solidarity and everything else, we are going to take these people in. The, the rest of the world uh, outside of Europe, I mean, uh, there has been a lot of discussion about what the U.S. could do, and there's been a lot of criticism that they haven't done enough, and there's been other criticism that say that, uh, look, I don't know how you're going to separate the good guys from the bad guys from coming into the U.S., and I'm saying some politicians are going to politicize that. Should there be a greater responsibility from countries outside of Europe? Yes, and it probably will, but not immediately. I think what countries like our own here and others are probably waiting for is for Europe to basically show that it has a plan. By a plan, I mean... They want Europe to lead. To lead. By plan, I mean that they're going to have some sort of a solution so you don't have endless flows coming into Europe and that they're willing to invest the necessary political and physical capital to try to gradually, you know, sort of change the circumstances, not in Syria proper, but around Syria and on the way from Syria to the Aegean. There's an economic debate that's happening uh, regarding immigration or migration, uh, and of course we're going to include refugees in this as well. That some say that as you let refugees into your country, that sucks a lot of the resources that could go to other projects or uh, other budgetary items. At the same time, some would argue that countries like Canada and the U.S. in the past have been very open-armed when it comes to immigration, and that's helped overall build the economy. Which one is it? Well, it's a little bit of both. And the refugee component adds to a story. They tend to be the professionals, the entrepreneurs, people with skills. You know, take the Haitian flows to the United States. In the 1970s and early 80s, and out of Haiti, were indeed the educated classes. No support for the receiving country. But the rate at which these people have been coming does not really give the receiving country an opportunity to try to do what they need to do, assess skills, try to figure out you know, how to bring them into the workforce and to help them help the economy. In terms of the bigger picture, over time, I suspect this could be a very big dividend for Germany. In the interim, two, three, five years can be an extremely costly enterprise. Why is that? Because they're going to have to invest an enormous amount in integrating these people. For instance, today, Frau Merkel announced that she would put on the table six billion euro to distribute to the lender, the, the federal states, and the localities, cities and localities. And this is only going to be a drop in the bucket. Here's the other thing, is that we have an ongoing war that's going on. These refugees are leaving because they're in the middle of an awful, awful war. They're getting killed and slaughtered. At what point do we say the UN, 
the world needs to step in with a peacekeeping force because it seems like a, a massive stalemate. And, and it is, and we don't like to send peacekeeping forces in the middle of a war. Once something has been agreed, once some semblance of stability has actually yeah. been on the ground, then countries will put together, you know, the, whatever the so forces. So your answer is that it's, it's not a likely possibility. It's not a likely possibility. Moreover, I think that you're so right in saying the crisis is so huge. The first thing that we need to do is do the things that are necessary from a humanitarian perspective. Yeah, it's a humanitarian crisis. It's a humanitarian crisis. It's also other things. But the first thing that we need to do is that we need to get it right as a humanitarian crisis, and we need to respond to that. If we do that and we do it well, then all sorts of other things will become possible.